met a man the other day who thought the earth was flat. I said, man, you must be crazy. Where the hell is your tinfoil hat? But he spoke with such conviction, and he believed the words he spoke. And something deep inside me knew this couldn't be a joke. But why would he believe this? And why believe such things? Because everybody knows the earth's a ball and that it spins. Well, you must be pretty crazy if you think the earth is flat. Because we all know that it's a globe, and that's a simple fact. So I said, what about the photographs that NASA takes from space? He gave a knowing smile and told me, man, those things are fake. But what about the videos that I've seen with my two eyes? What about them? He replied, have you heard of CGI? Oh, NASA's faking everything that you have ever seen. And as for flying to the moon, well, they ain't never been. Indeed, my friend, they're lying scum. It's there for you to see. Just take some time, look into it, and the truth will set you free. Well, I was kind of skeptical, but I have an open mind. And what he said was interesting, and I've got a little time. So I grabbed myself a doobie, and I started watching vids. Cause if NASA's really lying, then they're lying to my kids. And as I watched, I got angry as I learned of the deceit. The global earth deception was right there at my feet. Well, holy shit, this could be true. What if we're not on a globe? The more I learned, the more I yearned, the more I started to probe. I upturned every rock of information I could find. I started to unlock the truth, the war upon my mind. I had a thousand questions I just couldn't understand. I had to meet that man again, that flat earth man. Oh, NASA's faking everything that you have ever seen. And as for flying to the moon, well, they ain't never been. Indeed, my friend, their line scum is there for you to see. Just take some time, look into it, and the truth will set you free. Well, I caught him up that evening, and he agreed to me. He was very welcoming, and he showed me to my seat. He said, I see you've done some research, my open-minded friend. I know you'll have some questions, which we'll get to in the end. First, take a look at what's on these walls, paintings of a globe. I painted every single one of these, don't you know? You see, back in the day before computers, I was in demand. An artist painting everything I saw upon the land. Landscapes were my favorite, I was awfully good at those. Many people told me that they looked just like photos. And then one day I got a call from a real important dude. He asked me if I'd like a job and said the money's good. Well, what's the job? I asked him. Then I'll wait for his reply. You'll be painting clothes for NASA. Then he promptly said goodbye. Well, I was sworn to secrecy. I could not tell a soul that I just got myself a job with NASA painting globes. My work was published globally in every magazine to fool the people of where we live, a truly evil scheme. See, we don't live on a globe, he said. The earth is truly flat. I've been on the inside and I know that that's a fact. Oh, NASA's faking everything that you have ever seen. And as for flying to the moon, well, they ain't never been. Indeed, my friend, their line scum is there for you to see. Just take some time, look into it, and the truth will set you free. Well, we talked until the sun came up and my mind was truly blown. This man had challenged everything that I thought I thought I'd known. And finally it was clear to me to why these bastards lie. And finally it was clear to me about the reasons why. It's all about control, you know, to get inside your head. It's all about the money, too. They got an awful lot of bread. Fifty million dollars, man, what could you do with that? That's what NASA gets a day to hide the Earth is flat. You see, if they can get you to believe that you're on a spinning ball, well, things like God and creation just make no sense at all. It all exploded from nothing right with their theory of Big Bang. 
is true satanic mind control from the Freemasonic gang. You see, it's only Freemasons that get to go to space. They're the evil bastards who are lying to your face. Yeah, NASA's pretty evil, man. The whole thing is such a fraud. The only reason they exist is to hide a loving God. Oh, NASA's faking everything that you have ever seen. The NASA's flying to the moon where they ain't never been. Indeed, my friend, their lying scum is there for you to see. Just take some time, to get to it, and the truth will set you free. Yeah, NASA's pretty evil, man. They're a lying scumbag. Take some time, man. Look into it. I did. Now my mind is truly blown. <laughs> the truth will set you free. All right, so uh, here you go. What is this? This is the picture of the Earth. I like the first video. That was very great. The video just before there is like, what was that about? That video. That, was it? That was about brainwashing. How do you brainwash? Well, you repeat it. You repeat the same thing over and over again. You know, if somebody's resisting the concept, if you keep fucking repeating it after six times, they'll incorporate it in their brain. They may not agree with it. Okay, so here's the uh, the picture of the Earth from uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. You've never seen that with your eyes from that scale of a model, that point of view from outside of the planet's surface. But yet your brain has three-dimensionalized, oh yeah, that's the Earth. How? Through repetition. Next image. Well, here's the, uh, the first image that sold the whole thing. As you can see, that's clearly the universe. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> clearly the universe. I swear to God. I mean, there's the sun. I mean, I could recognize that thing. It's a bullseye. It's like a planet. It's an egg, whatever. But there you go. You got each rung, the whole thing. 1482, this is when they came up with this idea. We are on that thing. It's a ball. Hey, we should go to the North and the South Pole. We didn't do it yet. It's a fucking ball. Hey, nobody's even like jumped up high enough to see if it is a ball. You can't do that. We don't have planes yet. It's a ball. You know what? We adopted this whole model like four or five hundred years before the airplane. Four hundred years before the airplane, pretty much. It was like what, like, beginning of the 1900s? They went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper. That's it. It's been a decade since like Columbus hit America. That's it. It's funny that we said that this is, this, this is what we're in right now, this is what we're on, before any instrument of proof. Until, pause, can you do it? It's funny, back in the 60s when, when they went to the moon, this is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. So if they were wrong after 500 years, the question is, would they tell you? University institutions, Physics, the Royal Society in London, that supports NASA. It's basically the model we accepted right now. I don't feel it's spinning a thousand miles an hour right now. That's because of gravity. Hey, gravity, what's that? That's the thing you can't feel. Here's like a perfect example of them landing on the moon. I mean, it's proof right there. This is an official NASA photo of the first Apollo 11 lunar module landing on the moon. I mean, it's right there. This is the proof, man. It's the pictures right there. It's landing on the moon. But the only problem I have with this picture is that it's taken from the moon. <laughs> I don't know what the big deal was with it being the first guy on the moon. Uh, it seems the camera crew was already there. <laughs> this is an amazing monumental uh, sort of feat of space exploration. This is the Galileo satellite 
full authentic NASA imagery of the Galileo satellite. It must have cost like tri a trillion dollars for this fucking operation. Very expensive. <laughs> this is the Galileo satellite. They never knew it would go that far and reach Jupiter. You know, they didn't know. It's the first time anything goes that far. It managed to get there. There's Jupiter. There's one of its moons. I mean, it's clearly lining up to take some really good photos of Jupiter. Immediately followed by a camera satellite. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly composing the whole shot out in outer space. Amazing, eh? What the cameras could do when they fly. It's into outer space, a place we've never been to. That's amazing. Look at that. That's perfect. That's like the photo of the year, if you ask me. For a fucking satellite to be able to, like, you know, like wake up in outer space, we didn't even know we could do that, you know, and we, uh, unbelievable. I give, it the, I give it to NASA. I guess this is a photo of the Hubble telescope taking a picture of itself. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's an authentic photo of the Hubble telescope out there doing its job. Isn't that amazing how they could take a photo of the thing taking photos? <laughs> out in outer space. Unbelievable. You know, they never crossed Antarctica, but let's go to the moon and take pictures of shit out in space. That's fucking unbelievable. You know, the instruments won't work in Antarctica. It's too fucking cold, but hey. <laughs> Let's go somewhere we, where we don't know the instruments will work. That's unbelievable. I can't, it just boggles my mind how they do this stuff. All right, next one, solar powered, by the way, solar powered. Look at that, environmental. Environmental in outer space. Okay, <laughs> that's my only fucking fan right there. Naomi, that's it, there you go. There you go, there's what you believe. That's it, that's it, that point of view you've never seen. Think about these things. Right? I heard that you know, if you want to like program a human mind, what you do is you just repeat images to a, a young child while the brain is forming. Well, literally. Yeah, pretty much. And then you know, the kid fucking grows up and you've wired the kid. It's fucking mind control. It's great. There is a firmament or dome encasing our flat plane. The firmament is described in the Bible's creation narrative. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. In Egyptian mythology, Nut is the goddess of the sky. She is seen star-covered, arching over the earth, representing its dome. In Greek mythology, Uranus was the primeval god of the sky. The Greeks imagined the sky as a solid dome of brass, whose edges descended to rest upon the outermost limits of the flat earth. Uranus was the literal sky, and Gaia the earth. In the Roman era, he was often depicted as Eon, god of eternal time in the form of a man holding the zodiac wheel, standing above Gaia. The Hebrews believed the sky was a solid dome. They called this solid vault of heaven the Rakia, with the sun, moon, and stars beneath. In Indian mythology, the dome is called Brahmanda. This is the structure of the world according to Finnish mythology, showing a dome with the stars projected onto it. In the aboriginal conception of the world, the earth was circular and flat, covered by the dome of the sky which stretched out to the horizon. So many ancient peoples knew about this dome and wove it into their worldview. The elite would have us believe that these are just made-up cosmologies invented by peoples who were too scientifically ignorant to understand reality. But there is no coincidence that the same description of a flat earth and dome is so common. These cultures around the world had special knowledge about the nature of this place we are living in. In ancient times, something very awful happened, the Great Flood, sometimes called the Deluge. It was so devastating and frightening that it remained in all of humanity's ancient written and oral traditions. Almost every culture around the world has a Great Flood in the pages of their mythology, including the Incas, Mayans, Polynesians, Egyptians, Hopis, Aztecs, Germans, Greeks, Aboriginals, Indians, Vikings, Chinese, Sumerians, all around the world. Is this why the ancients were obsessed with tracking the movement of the stars? Were they trying to predict when another one of these catastrophes would happen? The foreign celestial body that caused destruction has been known as Typhon in the Roman Empire, Frightener in the Celtic nations, Shiva in India, and Angra Manu in the Persian Empire. Here we see the Milky Way's Great Rift. The definition of rift is a crack, split, or break in something. The great rift we see when we look at the sky is not a series of dust clouds like the liars at NASA would have us believe, but a literal crack in the dome. The Mayans called this the dark rift before any scientist had named it the great rift. The Bible refers to this crack as the windows of heaven. It was through these windows, through the dark rift, that the waters of the great floods fell. 
In Norse mythology, we find that at Ragnarok, the sky splits in two. From the split, the sons of Muspel ride forth. In the Babylonian creation epic, the sky is made from the body of Tiamat, the goddess of watery chaos. The god Marduk splits her like a shellfish into two parts, posting guards as to not let her waters escape. The aboriginal people saw the dark rift as the area where a dangerous creature known as Yura lives. Among American Indians, the sky was also conceived of as a solid dome which would break in cycles. Much evidence has come forth that a worldwide flood happened 5,000 to 7,000 years ago. There's also evidence that a worldwide flood occurred as recent as the 1800s. These are photos you rarely see, ancient structures covered in mud and many destroyed, but they have since been dug up and refurbished. Many ancient sites we know and love are not the originals. They were buried and rebuilt in the late 1800s through the early 1900s. We could excuse the destruction of some of these ancient sites if they were one area or continent, but we see the same all throughout the world. Mexico, Egypt, Greece, Russia. The elite rebuilt these structures for us because they don't want us to know about the destruction that took place sometime in the 1800s. A great flood coming from the sky would mean they could not impose a heliocentric worldview on us, since the dome and waters above obviously don't fit into a globe model. And simple weather patterns could never explain a worldwide flood. At this point, we can only speculate. What we can be sure of, however, is that there is a dome above us, and these floods come from the crack we see in the dark rift. The reality of the dome and cyclical destruction is hidden in plain sight, Rainbows prove that we're living under a dome. Anybody can create a rainbow outside with sufficient sunlight and water. However, a mirror is required to create a rainbow inside, and not just a mirror, but one that is submerged in water. If a rainbow is caused by reflection, refraction, and dispersion of light in water droplets, resulting in a spectrum of light, then why would you need a mirror inside? After all, you can easily have dispersion of light in water droplets indoors. It's because rainbows require a mirror, and outside, the dome is acting as this mirror. Like the protocol for making indoor rainbows, our flat earth has waters above, the waters which come down during the floods, and water on its surface. The dome acts as the mirror in between. Modern science says that in a rainbow, direct sunlight comes into a rain droplet, and then it comes out looking like the visible spectrum. Each water droplet acts as its own lens. But if this were the case, each water droplet in a rainbow would contain all the colors of the visible spectrum, resulting in a hodgepodge of colors throughout, and not the gradual spectrum we see. When we zoom in, each droplet of a rainbow has its own specific color. This only makes sense if the visible spectrum is being reflected off of a type of mirror, a dome, and then spreading onto the waters of a rainbow, the dome triangulating the sunlight. The flat earth dome is fastened to the outer limits of the Antarctica ice wall that surrounds our plane. In 1947, during Operation High Jump, Admiral Byrd discovered the outer boundaries of the firmament. Many of his men's planes were disappearing very quickly. A lot of them were crashing into invisible barriers and disintegrating in mid-flight. It was shortly after discovering this barrier that Byrd discontinued his mission and returned home. What happened is Byrd's planes encountered the walls of the vaulted dome. Soon after, many measures like the Antarctica Treaty 
and a consistent military presence at the ice wall were put in place to cover up the structure of our enclosed world system, while also preventing unwarranted intrusion which could lead to an announcement of the discovery of the Earth's dome. Here are some photos of the ice wall which the dome is fastened to. Sadly, we don't have as many as we would like since this area is heavily protected by military presence. So if there is a dome, how are meteorites explained? The composition of meteorites is very similar to that of the rocks and crust found on the ocean floor. Most of the ocean floor is basalt. Basalt contains primarily pyroxene, plagioglass, and oftentimes olivine. And the most abundant minerals in meteorites are pyroxene, plagioglass, and olivine. I'm therefore proposing that the waters above have a similar basalt that is found on our own ocean floors, and that these chunks from time to time hit our flat plain. It's been suggested that Libyan desert glass, mysterious shards of a glass-like material which, according to the scientists, has an unknown origin, are pieces of the dome that have been shed. Libyan desert glass is unlike any other glass. It is a form of molten glass but has no clear layers of other minerals. It is 98% molten silica. It has an extremely high formation temperature of 3092 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's extremely resilient, like any dome above us would be. Where are all the satellites? Along with 2,271 satellites orbiting the Earth, there are 500,000 fragments of space junk. And we're supposed to believe that in all of the feeds they give us, we are constantly, conveniently witnessing portions of the Earth without any of these man-made obstructions? This is absolutely bullshit. Lighter than air vehicles, high altitude airships, and high altitude platforms are often misperceived as satellites by the public. So at nighttime, when you see one of those moving dots in the sky and believe it to be a satellite, it's actually one of these illuminated balloons. The skies are riddled with these communications technologies, but we are made to believe that they exist beyond our atmosphere. If we are to believe NASA's stories, then here's a question. How do satellites survive the 4,000 degree Fahrenheit temperature in space? There are only seven elements on the periodic table that could withstand this heat, and none of them have been used for satellites. Satellites allegedly reside in the thermosphere, where temperatures can soar 4,000 degrees and more. This is simply not possible. These technologies are in flight underneath our dome. Including the technologies I just named, there are at least 18 platforms that can be used independently, in tandem, or in groups to provide all of the services that satellites supposedly provide. With new eyes, it becomes clear. No actual photos, no actual video footage, just CGI and photoshopped images. The similar Hebrew word nasha means to lead astray, to delude, to morally seduce. It's then no wonder that the NASA logo contains a serpent's tongue, serpents having been a symbol for deception throughout mythology. On the gravestone of Werner von Braun, one of NASA's early rocket developers, there is a reference to a Bible verse that talks about our dome, our firmament. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheath his handiwork. I've discussed in previous videos how the sun is the collective consciousness of the whole, showering down on us in tandem with the astrolite and black sun. Our auras contain the information of our individual energetic vibrations. Our auras are literally made of sunlight, and the sun is literally the sum of our auras. This is revealed within the word aura. AU is the periodic table's abbreviation for gold, and Ra is the Egyptian personification of the sun. Sun and moon are each about only 3,000 miles away, sitting well underneath the dome. What about the stars? Stars are clearly not suns. They are not bright and luminous like we have been sold, but twinkling energies of light that continuously change in color, texture, and shape. <laughs>
sonoluminescence is the emission of short bursts of light from imploding bubbles in a liquid when excited by sound. To put in simple terms, the energy of a sound wave in a fluid can create flashes of light. Due to sound frequencies, beautiful patterns occur on the surface of an object closely surrounding the sound vibrating medium. Cymatics is vibrational phenomenon, beautiful patterns that are created within water and sand when sound is applied. The stars are full of similar geometric patterns. These sound frequencies are carried through the astral light, which shoots out of the center of our plane. The other side of our plane, Agartha, is so harmonious that these frequencies created there, whether it be actual sound or just waves of natural harmonious tones, appear as beautiful lights in our skies, revolving us and giving us spiritual guidance in the form of astrology. So waves that create the stars are caused by frequencies from the other side of our flat plane. These sound waves propagate through the dome and the waters above, where they reflect back as twinkling sonoluminescent lights that we call stars. And we can zero in and see. It looks like these lights are indeed reflecting off water, in a similar fashion that they would on the floor of a pool or ocean. With just a telescope in our backyards, we can see that planets are not as defined as NASA would have us believe. In fact, Venus looks more like a star than a planet, and same with Mars. I'm still figuring out what exactly planets are, but for now we can assume they are created similarly by sonoluminescence. Planets do not twinkle like stars, giving me the impression that they are stronger, more consistent monotone frequencies, therefore appearing more solidified than a star, which represents consistent but oscillating frequencies. Earth is spinning, with its surface at the equator moving at a speed of a thousand miles per hour. Earth is also zooming around the sun at around 67,000 miles per hour. In addition, our solar system whirls around the center of our galaxy at some 490,000 miles per hour. You've never felt a thing on this motionless plane, but besides that, we've been seeing the same constellations and stars in the skies for thousands of years. This is because the stars are revolving year after year in the same positions around us. It's amazing how most of humanity is fooled into thinking the opposite, even while our senses tell us otherwise. The transgression of stars also make a dome shape. The North Star remains perfectly fixed in place night after night, year after year. Directly underneath the North Star Polaris sits the vortex hole into the other side of our flat plane, into the land of perpetual twilight. This is where we find Agartha, Hyperborea, the Garden of Eden. The swastika is an ancient symbol seen in almost all ancient cultures in some form, oftentimes in association with the black sun symbol. The Big Dipper dances in a circle around Polaris, and this is where the swastika symbol comes from. All compasses point to the holy hole, the true north pole of our flat plane. The reason the swastika has held such significance is because it meets at the point in which underneath lies the exit hole into paradise. The Big Dipper dancing around Polaris moves like a vortex. Underneath, there is a literal vortex. As above, so below, literally. These clues have been placed here as a form of lesser magic, hiding the truth in plain sight, so those who may decode them can get out of this false matrix and into a place full of love and unity. Our journey into space will not only make us stronger and more prosperous, but will unite us behind grand ambitions and bring us all closer together. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you believe that space is going to do that? I thought politics would do that. Well, we'll have to rely on space instead. <laughs>